Well, hello, this is Universalist. You can call me Chris. And I thought I'd make a short video uh, about uh, my project named Guerrilla Beam. It's Guerrilla with one R, two L. Uh, for those wondering how it is written, um, what I'm gonna talk about today is uh, slides. You may know these things, they are a bit of a thing of the past. And uh, I, mean, I should have put this somewhere here around. Doesn't matter. Um, you'll recognize it. It's uh, a pretty standard format, but it has uh, fallen out of favor because uh, basically with slide projectors you were limited to a uh, number of, uh, of storing only a number of slides in, a, in the projector itself, uh, which uh, uh, made digital projectors much more popular. And now oh, these are leftovers. As are um, the lenses that we're used to project these, these slides. This is a very old and cheap one. It's made in GDR. For those uh, who are interested, uh, GDR was one of the biggest manufacturer of, of camera and. Uh, optical equipment before the Second World War mostly, but there is a big heritage, especially in the town of Dresden where I, where I come from, uh, about those lenses. So, uh, mod modern and decent ones look like this. And you might see this is nicely, nicely engraved and as if you can read it, a very uh, a very high speed, uh, a small number like 2.4 uh, next to the focal length indicates this. So is there, is there a thing we can do with this, with this stuff? Or possibly um, old camera lenses like this. I used to be a hobby photogra photographer and if you're a photogra photographer uh, you're kind of always looking for the, or often looking for the, the fastest and uh, most glass heavy lenses because those uh, usually produce the best results. So I happen to have quite a few of those, of those lenses, like this for example, or of course my uh, standard Canon photo lens. This is a 85 millimeter portrait lens, as you can buy still today. And okay, how how do these uh, both things uh, belong together? Well, if you take a photo lens, it does exactly. Oh, I'm very want. It does it exactly the same as a as a projector lens. So uh, it magnifies the image and uh, projects it on a uh, well at a distance on a screen, preferably. And so if you take a look through this lens instead, you'll see the same result, almost. So these uh, these two are basically interchangeable if it weren't for the different format. I'll see if this is very different from this baronet. And those projector lenses also have a funny uh, a funny property of uh, these threads being completely different, uh, much worse than with uh, regular camera mounts. So uh, I needed to make a, a special adapter. And since I'm, I like to 3D print, I adapted not only these lenses. If you uh, have a look inside, you can see that there are teeth 
that will hold the lens uh, regardless of its of its diameter within certain limits well, within the common limits for those uh, lenses they differ by uh, up to two millimeters millimeters and this adapter compensates for that so stick it in and from this moment on you can focus with uh, uh, with an integrated mechanism or with the newer ones uh, you can also use the, the grooves that are on the uh, projector lens if it has any there's no guarantee that it will match the grooves but uh, uh, it's nice to have if you should you need it so that's that now we can make oh yeah this is a uh, this is an adapter that was that is intended for M42 cameras or camera mount. So it's an adapter, or it's an adapter to be used with SLR cameras and certain compatible um, projector lenses, which is nice to have because uh, those projector lenses are usually uh, decently fast um, and much more affordable than a, than a comparable SLR. Uh, SLR lens and, uh, you could buy. And we have uh, now the opportunity to reuse this adapter with uh, an M42 adapter I made for the projector I designed. So what we have here are two M42 X1 one millimeter pitch, fine threaded screw threads. I hope you could see. It. I demonstrated. Uh, so as you can see, I'm not cheating. This is a M42 extension, just regular, and this has the focus right. Let me check. Uh, uh, Oh no, it's not good. Bad. Uh, okay. I'm sorry for the for bad focus. That's my my first video of this, this kind, almost. So yeah, this should show nicely. So it's a working M42 thread. It which is quite uh, quite robust. You can't break it with, uh, with your hand. And, uh, if it gets stuck, you're, uh, it's kind of hard to get it loose. But ah, oh yeah, the proof. Oh, this is one side, and this is the other. And as it as this is as this is an extension, I can screw this into the other side here. It's a bit tight, but uh, that's to be expected. It's, it's better. It's better. It's a bit tight than uh, too loose, because the uh, tolerances uh, are really quite quite small here, and if there is a 0 0.2 millimeter difference in diameter, it can happen that it, that the screws will break so better this way. And as you can see it screws quite nicely. Doesn't even need uh, need oil or something. But a tiny drop of lubricant won't hurt. So that's it. I screw it nice and tight. Oh. Uh, for this purpose there's a uh, we call it Wendelung in German, I don't know what the English name is right now. Oh, this is this is to make it easier to to grip the part. As you can see, I, it needs a, it needs some force to unscrew it, and but I did get traction quite well because of this uh, feature, which is. 
Recently new to Guerrilla Beam and needs a lot of computing power, but it uh, works really nice. So that's what beside uh, let's put in uh, let's have a close look to see his uh, his fingers here we have springy and we have teeth that are supposed to go into this and we can just put it in here and now we have an, have an integrated unit more or less this, uh, this is a kind of a peculiarity uh, if you noticed um, as you can see, the uh, uh, lens can be focused uh, through this, uh, this thread. But if I screw it in, the lens gets pushed out uh, again. This is because it will touch the bottom of the adapter at some time and can't go further. Uh, can have a look at this from the other side. And you can see it coming up, coming up, coming up. And uh, let's push it in a bit, so you can see. Oh, focus, yeah. And now, now it's, it gets pushed out. But this is uh, this is because uh, this uh, this lens is uh, greatly vary in length, and I wanted to adapt as well to to fit as many as possible. So um, here's some. Uh, it can could be that your lens sticks out a bit if you if you have inserted it, but uh, this doesn't hinder function. So uh, pretty much talking about this uh, this adapter. Let's uh, let's get some let's get get some action, shall we? Um, without greater introduction, the central part of career beam. It's 3D printed uh, as well. It contains one of these slides I, made, I showed you earlier. This is kind of a, a test slide. And just goes in here. Got, what's here is a Fresnel lens. This is quite used. It got the front heat. Oh, who knows how. And oh, this is it. And we need a light source. Um, Light sources are, well, uh, they used to be incandescent or uh, arc, uh, arc discharge or hot stuff, other hot stuff. Uh, and uh, recently everybody's switching to LEDs, so why not, uh, why not slide projectors, I thought. And this is what you have here. It says caution hot surf surface, but uh, normally this doesn't go above uh, 60 degrees, so it's uh, it's okay. It, if it was only 70 degrees, it would uh, melt the 3 d printed part, but it's okay unless you are in a really hot 